Good evening. This is Banks. So what is Banks? It's a visual programming language for the Node MCU and the ESP8266. Because it's kind of like Scratch, you can push code blocks around like they're bits of Lego, which makes it an awful lot of fun, makes it really easy for kids to get involved and those who are less familiar with code to actually get things working, and it's designed to run on robots, on gadgets, on things that light lights or collect data, and it's really good fun to use. So if I click find nodes, it's looking for node MCU controllers. Um, it's identified one attached on COM4. And then I can select my node and oh, there we are and connect to it. So then I can actually go and write some code for it. So if I say do some classic code, here we are. And we've got print ABC. We can say hello world. So then if I click run, this is running on the node MCU. Under this menu here are some of the specialist parts for the node MCU. Now this system here is generating Lua code and sending it up to the node MCU or to any other ESP running the Lua node MCU dev kit. And these extra bits here are extra code blocks. So there's some in black because they're not quite right, but look what we can do. We can do the hello world of microcontrollers. I can say, well, pin one is an output. And then on the output, we can write true. And when this is run, this will turn an LED on. So this allows you to kind of let children at these controllers. It probably needs some refining to make it a bit more child friendly. Um, I've tried to capture, while keeping it child friendly, the essence of what the Node MCU is as opposed to the Arduino. And to show you what I mean there, let's just keep a couple of bits of this code and drop in a timer. So Node MCU is very much more event driven than the standard Arduino code. So we can say, now this timer number is a little bit arbitrary. But we can say every 500 milliseconds, and again, this might need to be half seconds. We'll leave this set to an output. Yeah. And actually, we'll, we'll do this with print hello world. So every 500 milliseconds, we can tell the system to go and print hello world. And click run. And it's sent to the controller. There we are. Now, just to make it possible to stop the thing. I'll just tell it to stop timer zero because otherwise that will carry on printing forever. There we are. Um, and I've added in example code. Now, at this point, I think that this example code doesn't quite fit my recent changes. So let's just drop in a logic true and we'll Drop that away in the bin and do a LED on is not variables LED on. So here we've got some fairly complicated ideas. We've got looping, logic comparisons, maths, including pi, text, including text manipulation, um, and something a bit specialist to this system, repeating text, which is useful for some specific areas. Lists of things. Colours. And we can use colours with the lights. So this is for the WS2812, the uh, light grids. So you could maybe output a set of the colours as strings through here on a particular pin. Variables, so you can set a variable. And once you've told it about a new variable name, it stores them here. I've not really spent much time with these, but you can create your own user-defined functions. This is a 
fairly competent language. Okay, now actually in this particular case, this is pin one, not pin zero. I've got it connected on. And we can run that and you get a blinking LED. This can then be connected to robots. And what I'm going to do before I uh, let the little one on or little ones on this to build a robot, I'm going to create some specific outputs or maybe a motor section. So it's actually pre-built to go and talk with the motor controller we've got. Um, and I'm going to do the same for any of the sensors. Now, the Node MCU dev system itself has a lot of sensors already known. It already knows how to deal with, I think, I2C, some specific sensor chips. Um, and this stuff would be far too complicated for kids to get their hands around. Um, whereas if you create a specific chunk of code in here to handle that, they could just drop it on their robot project and have their robot or Internet of Things or whatever gadget interact with that directly. Um, there is the normal kind of standard save stuff. So you can save and open files, recent files, a bunch of examples to demonstrate different parts of this. Um, the debug menu is just while I'm working on it. Again, this is very much alpha and you can see this is currently running in Visual Studio. Um, it is running on Windows, but the core of it is actually based in a web app. So there's a web app wrapped in something that allows it to do the serial communications and to save stuff on the desktop. Um, it is the serial communications that really confined it to being a, uh, an app on a desktop. Wrapping this for the Mac and for Linux would probably be far easier because you could probably just throw together something with Python. Um, you still need something to maybe embed this part. So here I'm using the Ceph component, which is the Chrome embedded framework. And that's allowing me to do this HTML5 stuff based on Blockly uh, inside an app here. So I think we'll have to see how this looks on a robot. We'll have to see how it works for children once I've got the robot bits in there. And uh, I think next time you'll see this, you'll see it actually running on a robot. And hopefully I'll refine it a bit further. I'd love to hear your comments. And uh, down below, there will be links to the open source project. So it's open source and you can contribute. Uh, there will be also links to other videos where I've got Node MCUs or ASP8266 is running. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a subscribe if you want to hear more about this kind of stuff. And uh, I hope you have a great evening. Thanks. Goodbye.